five, four, three, two, one. This is the water bottle rocket I made. Rockets are cool, so I wanted to try making my own. But most hobby rockets use solid rocket motors, that I have never really liked. They have a tendency to explode at the wrong time, be unreliable, and you can't really test them. They are also a bit of a fire hazard. Water rockets are nice because you're just dealing with air and water. If you remotely pressurise the rocket, and wear eye and ear protection, it should be fairly low risk. Water rockets work a bit different to normal rockets. Air and water are compressed together in a pressure vessel with a nozzle at the end. When the nozzle is opened, the compressed air forces the water out the nozzle, creating thrust. The nozzle is straight and doesn't expand out like a normal rocket nozzle because the water isn't expanding like a gas. It's just being pushed out. The energy is being stored by the compressed air. The water is just there to provide extra mass, which creates more thrust. Water rockets also feel, for lack of a better term, more rockety. If you look inside a real rocket, by mass it's mostly fuel. A common analogy is a soft drink can, where the fuel takes up about the same mass fraction as the soft drink, and the actual rocket weighs the same as the empty can. This explains why rocket science is so hard. Getting to space requires so much fuel you can hardly carry anything else. Imagine trying to shave weight off a can to add avionics, control actuators, and engines. A smart Russian guy came up with a thought experiment about throwing rocks off a boat to figure this all out. Go look it up. This rocket is being designed to follow Australian civil aviation rules, so it's a small rocket weighing less than 500 grams and with less than 20 newton seconds of thrust. I'm planning to use a PET bottle as the pressure vessel. They are strong, lightweight, and gives me justification to drink lots of Diet Coke. At the pressures a PET bottle can withstand, around 100 psi, we will theoretically need around 400 mils of water to reach 20 newton seconds of thrust. So with the empty mass of the rocket and real world losses, it's likely the rocket will hit our weight limit before the thrust limit. This makes building a lightweight rocket super important, as it allows us to carry more fuel and go further up. I plan to build a static fire mount and validate the total thrust later on. The rocket itself is just some fins, a nozzle, and a screw thread to attach this to the bottle. Thanks to Stefanders who did the hard job of modelling the threads for the bottle, I just cut this out of the design I made. The rocket body and pressure vessel were printed from PETG with six exterior perimeter walls in the print settings. I thought this would be enough to make it airtight, thought being the key word. The launch mount is more complex. It contains a bike valve to attach an air compressor, a PVC end cap, a seal printed from TPU, and some hold down arms, which will be held against the rocket by a rubber band. To launch the rocket I'm using a model rocket igniter, and a piece of metal wire from a scouring pad to cut the elastic band. We gave this rocket a pressure test and it quickly became apparent the design totally sucks. Air was leaking out about as fast as it was going in, so there wasn't much risk standing next to it. The TPU seal was pretty hard and didn't provide much of a seal. I should have made it thicker and softer, but then I'd have to reprint the hold down arms. The thickness of this seal in this design affects the arm length so one can't be adjusted without changing the other. Not a great design feature. We also noticed air started to leak between the layer lines of the print. I had heard of this happening but figured thick walls would be enough. But no, it really doesn't hold. So on to version 2. I made the pressure vessel much shorter. It now sits mostly inside the PVC end cap. This should help stop air leaking through the layer lines. I also replaced the TPU seal with an O-ring. The rocket should be able to seal and push up into the hold down arms without becoming unsealed like the last version. I made the base shorter and smaller. The hold down arms also got moved to the stand, not the pressure vessel, and the mounting arrangement got swapped around. On the first version the screw attached to the centre of the mount, and the arms on the outside. Moving the arms to the inside made them print without support material, they are stronger, and allowed me to nest the screws inside the stand. They kept getting unscrewed last time, and it looks a lot cleaner. I also printed the fins separately from the body. They kept warping at the tips when printed in one piece. I glued these in place and also added some super glue to the inside of the pressure vessel. I was hoping this would help seal the 3D print. Testing this version went better than last time, but it still wasn't great. As you can see, I didn't bother to attach the launch mount to anything, so it's held up by some water bottles. I really need to stop skipping things to save time that I end up having to fix later. 
Anyway, the O-ring seems to be holding, but it's hard to tell. So much air is leaking out between the bottle and the rocket body that any other leaks are hard to identify. Still, the pressure did build. I was targeting 50 psi for this initial test. It built right up until the rocket decided to launch itself. <sighs> Designing a proper hold-down system is on the to-do list. I printed another rocket and glued the bottle in place this time. I wanted to see if the leaking was coming from just the threads of the rocket, or if the seal between the rocket and the launch mount was also leaking. As a temporary fix, I also added some tabs for the hold down arms to grab onto. This went better. The first launch is the one I showed at the start. This initial test was at 50 psi, which the rocket reached. The compressor turned off, and I got to launch the rocket using the igniter system. All went pretty well. The close up is a bit more interesting. As the pressure starts to build, this area next to the fin starts to leak. I think this is more leaking through the layer lines. The bubbles also appear kind of foamy, as if they are contaminated with glue or something. This vertical leak is also interesting. Might be coming from the pressure vessel or the seal between the pressure vessel and the end cap. Who can tell? We tried again aiming for 100 psi. The close up looked good. The pressure built nicely right up until 55 psi when the rocket launched itself again. That was kind of expected, but the flight was pretty good. It launches straight up and only really tips over when it runs out of water. Interestingly, on the way down the rocket falls base first. With the center of mass very close to the bottom and the low speeds, the fins really don't do much. This was a fun little project, despite the design sucking. But I prefer to fail at making my own thing than to follow someone else's instructions. If you want to build your own, I really recommend either this design, which appears to work well, or Air Command rockets who do some really impressive stuff. For my next rocket I want to replace the plastic bottle with a new pressure vessel, either a composite tube or finding a way to prevent my 3D prints from leaking. I will also need a new launch mount and release mechanism, and I should probably add a parachute too, with maybe a flight controller to open it, so really a whole new design.